important first steps when you're baking anything that involves yeast is to do what we call activate the yeast. I've added some warm water from the faucet, one cup to my liquid measure, because that's what the recipe calls for. And then I'm gonna be adding one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I'm gonna put it on top of the water. You'll notice it kind of floats there. Let it sit for just a minute, a few seconds, and then you wanna stir it in very carefully, making sure that you mix it in. It smells like bread baking. You'll know that the yeast is um, dissolving and activating because of the smell. It's really important that we do this as a first step. And we're gonna stir this a couple more times as it sits while we're measuring all of our other ingredients. But it smells like baking bread. That's how you know you're doing it right. The great thing about cooking, it involves all of our senses. We say something looks good before we even taste it. We even say it smells good before we taste it. And you'll realize that touching and kneading the dough feels really cool too. All right, we're just gonna let this sit over here. Are you ready to mix our dry ingredients? Great. First, we need three cups of all-purpose flour. This is all-purpose flour right here. Now, sometimes a recipe says AP flour for short. That just means all-purpose. One, two. Now, when you're scooping a dry ingredient, it's very important that you don't push it down and stuff it in like we want to do with some things, but simply that we put it in by scooping and then gently scrape it off either with a knife or your finger or with the edge of the bag. But we never, never, never want to push it and squish it down. All right, there's our three cups of flour. All right, our next ingredient is sugar and it calls for one teaspoon of sugar. Just a reminder, usually, how much it holds is listed on the handle, but sometimes it's listed in the bowl or underneath. But it's always there somewhere. And we're gonna take this, fill it up, and then shake it off to make it level. Sprinkle it in. It also calls for one teaspoon of salt. Again, you want it to be level, not heaping, unless it says it. Some recipes give special instructions like pack it tightly or a heaping, but this one doesn't, so we follow it exactly. Stir up your dry really well. Make sure we're distributing the sugar and the salt throughout the flour, okay? It's time to add our yeast and our water. We're gonna make a little hole in the middle of our flour and we're gonna put that right in the center. Okay, now you'll notice that the dry has all dissolved. We just have a murky looking liquid. That's what you want. All right, we now are gonna stir all of this together well. And in the recipe it says until it's combined. What that means is this is gonna be like a ball of dough. Now you can't stir too um, hard because the flour will go everywhere and make a big mess. So you want to just keep moving the dough. You can squish it with the back of the spoon or whatever you're stirring with. Some people use wooden spoons, metal spoons, it does not matter what you use. But you want to use something pretty strong for when you combine the dough. Okay. There we go. You see how it's getting all together now? Okay, it's combined. Perfect. That looks amazing.